Hello, hello friends. This is Jairo Moreno or Dharma name Jamyang Pao. Uh, I don't know much Tibetan, but I off and on tried learning some Tibetan in Currently, I'm studying with the folks at Sik Gu, Sik Gu, S I C G U, Scholastic Institute, Chok Chok Scholastic Institute, Chok Gyaltsen University. <clears throat> So, um, I'm learning to read and write and speak it. Uh, some time ago, I started learning the alphabet and I wanted to create a chart um, of our alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, all the way through Z, and putting under each letter what the Tibetan uh, name of the letter would be. In Tibetan, they they uh, they say the alphabet in a different order from us and then but i wanted to uh, keep our western order and then place uh, uh, next to the uh, our letter uh, how the tibetan system pronounces the letter and without worrying about how, how it's written. Just to get an idea of what sounds are used in the Tibetan alphabet. It turns out that there's some missing sounds in Tibetan and there's some sounds that are not usually found in English or that we don't use um, a uh, a particular letter for. We may be able to create a sound that is not part of the alphabet, the ABCs. Okay, so I created a chart some time ago. Maybe it might confuse people and it might not be that useful. But for me, it was um, a bit enlightening. So I'm going to share it. Uh, so if you're learning Tibetan, you probably don't want to refer to this chart that I created. Let's see. I'm going to find it. Let's see if I have it open. I think it's over here. Let's see. I think this is it. So I think I can show this part. Ooh. Yes. This, uh, so here is the letter A in Tibetan. Um, there's actually, yeah, there's two versions of the letter A. There's this one, ah, uh, and then there's this one is, ah, uh, but it's written like this in a, 
transcribing or transliteration. One of the two. Transcription, I think it's called. Uh, using the Wiley system, or when you type type it in on a Tibetan keyboard, you would type in this one or that one. This is a single quote. And you would get the the uh, letter A, which is pronounced A ah in Tibetan. But you would get it the way they would write it. And I think I might be able to demonstrate that. Maybe not. <laughs> is this the word? Hmm. to open uh, a new uh, blank sheet. So, uh, let's see. So this is the letter A, right? There's two A's, basic A's. There's this A. Then when you type the letter A, when you're set for the Tibetan keyboard, you will get this. Oh, wow. Hmm. You'll get this. I mean, I should make uh, everything bigger. Okay. That's not a comma, that's a, a sing, single quote. Oh. Oh. Go back to Roman letters. Oh. Wow, that's weird. I guess that's a single quote. Oh yeah, in Word, you you get uh, two two kinds. Let me see if I do it again. Yeah, okay. I'll put this. Hmm. Anyway, when I type that single quote, but with my Tibetan keyboard set. I'll get mm, that. I have to make it bigger. So, oh shit. So that's the. Mm, I'm trying to make an equal sign. Oops. So that's the, that's the two kinds of letter A's in Tibetan, but they're not called letter A. They're called. Ah, uh, this one is called ah, uh, and this one's called ah. Uh. <laughs> it's a lower tone. This is a, a little bit higher and short. Ah, uh, and, and this one, ah, uh, okay. Now going back to this chart, so there's ah uh, and ah. Uh. Then uh, this. This is the next letter, B. The way we pronounce it is B, but in Tibetan it's Ba. Mm, but it sounds more close to P-A, Pa. Okay, and there's C in, in English, but it's not, it's more like Cha. Like Sanskrit cha or uh, Italian C, chow. 
chat. But there's two uh, kinds. This one without the H is unaspirated and with the H is aspirated. So the first one is pronounced cha and the second one cha. And then there's D in Tibetan is da in English E is a like Spanish A, but you won't find a character for it in Tibet. You would have to do this. Okay, mm. here's E. Whoa, that's big. In in Tibetan, it's actually. In Tibetan, it's actually written as part of the letter A, the character A, ah, this character, you, you write that character, and then you hit the letter I, <laughs> believe it or not. Oh, I th wow. That doesn't look right. <laughs> Let's try it again. Mm -hmm. Wow. How do you do Gigo? Jeez. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because they got cap locks on or something. Let's see. That's that's E, but it's pronounced A. Let's see. So it's pronounced. Oh shit. <laughs> mm, it's pronounced. It's pronounced. Shit, that's too big. Damn. It's pronounced. Still too big. It's pronounced A. Or sometimes A. A. Oh, shit. A. Wait. As in Jose. 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 This part. Oh. This part. No, not even that part. <laughs> this part. That's A. Jose. A. The Spanish. A, but it's, a, it's, yeah, I think, mm, I think it's, it's pronounced A, the one with the, uh, this one over here, has its version, right, it would be, if I could switch over to, the, I think it would, Oh, yeah. Make it bigger. That would be also A. Whoops. Oh, shit. There we go. But it's a little longer. Let's see. It's pro it's pronounced like a a ah shit I can't see like hey like the fonts 
eh, eh, no. Like, hey, no. It's just a, a longer version of A. How could you? And maybe it could put a let, uh, bar over it, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, now going back to the next letter. Well, there's a lot of letters to go through. There, but the interesting thing about Tibetan is there's no F sound, no Q sound, no V sound, no X sound. You know, you might be able to generate an X sound from finding others. Mm, or at least there's no letter uh, assigned for it in the Tibetan system of alphabet. There's, but there's there's the G sound, but it's never G. It's it's always hard, as in goat, as in gorilla, as in gate, as in what else? Garage. So it, so it's pronounced ga. Like if you were to sing the an alphabet song, all, all the letters would would be uh, ah, ah, ah. <clears throat> the uh, they would have an inherent vowel of ah. So it'd be ah ba cha cha da a. <laughs> well, that's a, a special symbol we were I was showing you. The, this is A, but with that symbol on top, it becomes A. So that symbol that goes on top can be used for the others to generate, like, instead of Ga, with the symbol over it, it would be gay. And Ha would be He, mm, like so. Uh, let's see. So this is... Ga, the ga sound, and to create it, you would mm, mm, you would to create ga. You in Tibetan, you just type in the letter G, and it produces it. Mm, this little dot after the letters, I should put one here too. And here, mm. Mm, that's that's kind of like a works like a period, but not really. It kind of separates this letter from other letters, and and you want to use that usually. Sometimes you have a combination of letters, and if and so they won't have that symbol between them. And it becomes like a, um, what's it called? A syllable. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> syllable. Okay. So, oh, oh. that, let's see. So now if you want to make the, Gay. <laughs> what I'm trying to, mm, or well, that's the sound I'm trying to produce, but it's actually written uh, gay. It's pronounced like gay, but it's written gay in the uh, transcription, I believe. So, but. In Tibetan, you would write it as like that. Okay. Let me make this bigger. So you can see this symbol on top. What it does is change the ah sound into a. Uh, 
that works for all the letters. And so you can get like this ha, you could get hey, for that symbol. And there's a symbol for making it he, and that that's this symbol here for I. But I'll show you that one. I can't seem to can't seem to generate it. Like if I want to write gi. Oh. Gi as in guitar. be like yeah like that gi oh and so on then there's ja ka la ma na I'll skip that one pa there's two kinds of Ba, there's ba and aspirated pa, and ra, sha, sa, ta, ta, wa, ya, sa, sa, na, sa, sa, za. But that's um, if if we were going to. Mm, use our dictionary sorting, but they have their own dictionary sorting of the letters. So this uh, chart is useless because you're not going to use it. <laughs> That's just to show you how what, how different Tibetan is from English. Mm. And this is the same chart but with a coloring and the colors mean something different like this uh this how you how you produce the sounds like your guttural sounds powerful sounds powerful, whatever. i came up with this jazzy russian chinese eureka <laughs> but uh Ignore these jazzy glow. That's reminders for me. So the guttural is uh, produced uh, down in your throat. So you get ga ka ga ga mm. ga ga ka nga palatal cha cha ja nya. Dental da na ta ta labial ba ma pa pa and then there's ya sa sa wa sa 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 la ra ra this ra, ra is like the letter r but it's more like the spanish r it's trilled at least you just once and uh, so it's ra ra and then sha and sa and a and ha there's the other a over here but they have their own this is uh, organized and um, close to the way they organize it but it's still not right it's organized in the way we find the letters, I believe, because there's D, N, then there's T, and so this is still alphabetical this way. So we have to arrange these uh, columns to meet their way of of ordering their alphabet, and I can uh, find an example of that here somewhere. Mm, it's found everywhere. Maybe it's uh, this one might work to 
Tibetan characters. That one, that one might work. Ooh. This is a picture. So this is the way they organize the alphabet up to most of the letters. There's still some missing. So there's, okay. Oh, shoot. Let's go back. Okay. So let's see if I can increase the size. Can you see that? Okay. So there's ka, no, there's ka, ka, ga, nga. Those are the guttural, right? Mm, guttural, then palatal. Cha, cha. Ja, nya is palatal. Then there's dental. Ta, ta, da, na. Then labial. Ba, pa, ba, ma. Then, then these are, ignore this, this jazzy. This is something else. This is similar to this one, actually. They look similar, but this one uh, is produced a little bit different. Uh, you uh, produce a sa sound in there. So it's sa, za. No, sa, za, za, wa. This doesn't even follow these. Then there's sha, uh, sa, a. Uh, Got to be careful pronouncing this one. It's longer. Ah. Uh, ya. Yeah. Then the ra, la, sha, sa. Mm. This one and this one are pretty similar. And one of them is higher toned. Mm. I forget which one. Mm, I think this one is higher toned. So it's ra la sha sa. And this is sha. And this is uh, sa. Even though it, it's spelled z a, it's, it's more like an s a sa. Okay. There's a few more letters that aren't, show, aren't there. I think it's only two more. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times four is 28, and there's two more. Makes 30. So there's 30 in the Tibetan alphabet. 30 characters and their sounds. So uh, that's it for today. Kind of a, a messed up introduction to the Tibetan language to get an idea. And the order, um, we'll go over it again more. And uh, a good teacher on this, uh, on this rows and columns is uh, Geshe Michael Roach in his Tibetan language uh, school on, on YouTube. And he explains uh, the importance of the columns and rows. And we'll get into that uh, in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope, wow. Did I take an hour to do this one? No. I'm going to stop recording and upload it to. Hmm. I'm not sure where I'm going to upload it. Maybe in several different play, uh, channels. Hmm. Uh, I'll stop.